Welcome everybody to the Discover What Drives Your Ideal Client with Chat GBT Masterclass. I'm your co-host Rob Cressy alongside Colin Scotland. Colin, how are you doing today? Wonderful, Rob. You? Doing 15 out of 10. And I'm really excited about this conversation because what we're going to do is we're going to dive into how you can leverage Chat GBT to better understand not just who your ideal client is, but what makes them tick and how we can take that knowledge or that language and turn that into content or marketing or systems and processes that helps us serve our clients more and create more of them. And Colin, before we get to that, uh, who are we and what do we do? So R Rob and I are co-founders of a community called Unlimited Coach, where we help entrepreneurs, leaders, and coaches to get ahead with AI and to amplify their impact. And where can they find us? Unlimited.coach. I'll put the link in the chat. You can find out more there. Cool. So there's a few things that you're going to learn today. Number one, how to uncover your ideal client's emotional drivers and pain points. To me, this is foundational 101. You learn how to do this thing. You will use it over and over again. And then number two, turning these pain points into content that connects and converts. And Colin, there's one of the things that you said on Monday's call that really resonated with me. And it was the more that we live in this world, the more nuances and things that we pick up regarding this. So can you sort of give us the frame of how you see, of course, so many of us know, yes, we can use chat GPT and uncover these things, but why is it important to revisit this? So everything's constantly changing, right? And we develop and learn and understand at different levels, depending on the context and the scenario where we're at right now is different to where we'll be at tomorrow. And the same is true for the people that you serve. So it pays great dividends to live in the space of understanding who you serve and doing that on an ongoing basis. So this is an iterative process. It's definitely not a set and forget type of thing because uncovering what makes the people that you serve tick really is an ongoing thing that deserves your attention and time. So having a look and a look again at what it is that drives your ideal clients is critical. The foundation of all business is value exchange. And that value exchange is you meeting the need of your ideal clients. Well, what is that need? And understanding that need is paramount if you're, if you're to be successful and you're to increase your impact in the world. So we're going to look at this from three perspectives. Think, feel, buy. What do my ideal clients think? What do my ideal clients feel? And how do my ideal clients take a decision to buy what it is that I'm offering? And we're going to cover loads and loads. We're going to go quite fast. We're going to cover loads of different ways that you can do all of this with chat GPT in seconds. Okay. And the idea of this is that you do this process, but then you, you redo this process and then you redo this process. So we never end in this. And one of the things I, I encourage uh, the, the people inside of unlimited, the people that I coach with is to keep an ICP document and ideal client profile document so that you've got research to fuel this doing and redoing with chat GPT. And we'll get into a little bit of the nitty gritty of that shortly. Cool. So Colin, I think one of the things that would best serve everybody is popping open the hood with our chat GPTs and show how each of you can do this. And Colin, I think we can both give the uh, very quick version. And then I know you also have prompts on your end. How does that sound? Sounds good to me, Rob. So, all right. I will share my screen right here. And Colin, if you want to also guide right here, um, let's just do some foundational things. Number one, one of the keys to this is make sure your custom instructions are set up. If you're using ChatGPT and you have not done this, and side note, this is the number one thing that we say to every one of our clients just to make sure you've done this. If you're using the web version or pretty much anywhere, just click your little icon here. It says customize GPT. And you'll see here, hey, how would you like ChatGPT to respond to you? Type in there who you are, what you do, 
who your target demographic is, what your brand voice is. I'll drop a link in the chat to a step-by-step -step for how you can do this. This right here will significantly customize your results to this. So uh, Colin, let's create a fictitious person or company in the way that we're going to do this. Cool. And if you guys want to guide us or uh, would it be easier for us to actually use somebody in here? Because I think what I want to do is create a use case that can apply for all of us. What do you think is the best I, way, Colin? I think so. Let's see. Like, what are you like? You, Chat GPT, these new AIs, they are experts at recognizing patterns, right? So the best thing that we can do is start with some form of pattern to guide and direct the AI. I've just dropped something in the chat there that you'll want to look at. It's called a power positioning statement. This is what you would put in the custom instructions area that Rob just shared. And I use a formula from branding for this, which is I am A, I help B to do C with D. So what is that power positioning statement for you? You'll notice a lot of the prompts that we'll play with shortly, they will start with that power positioning statement so that you can inform chat GPT of the pattern, who you are, who you serve broadly, because we're going to unpick that today, and then how you serve them, them people, and in what way. So I am A, I help B to do C with D. If you don't know what that is, then that's something definitely to work on with ChatGPT. There's a thing, right? And um, and that becomes the precursor to everything that we do with our ideal clients. So what? Let's let's drop some st stuff into the chat, like who you are. Do you want to pick a pick on somebody, Rob? Let them drop in, or do we should we just play with with some I th context? I think in the name of speed, we'll do this, but then we can customize this. So yeah, I'm okay. Gonna, let's here's do the it. context. I am a. What am I? I'm a coach. Yeah, let's be a coach. I help B. Who do I help? Um, should we just should we just make um pick something randomly for context? Business leaders and executives to do C with D to do what? Um to be more effective at running their company. And without their life together. And their life, this? yeah. I was gonna say without like without compromising on the richness of life, you know, the. Okay. So uh real time nugget for each of you. So tip, take what is in your head and get it out of your head. So when Colin is saying this, I'm just typing this and you're like the richness of life. That feels so vague. Chat GBT picks up on this. Um, here's the context of what we are creating. All right. And I want to. of my ideal demographic. Cool. This is very generic by design, but we want to show you how simple this can be. So number one, you start with who you are in this positioning statement. And all right, here are the top 10 pain points often experienced by business leaders and executives managing the balance between business demands and life fulfillment. Us as coaches or entrepreneurs, we're going to be dealing with a degree or two away from these things. Maybe it's a little bit more specific on how we're doing this for leaders, but we have here time scarcity and burnout, overwhelm, discomfort. So when you see this, this seems pretty spot on because I can relate to all of these. It's like, yep, time scarcity, burnout, and overwhelm, all of this. So Colin, with this information here right now, what would you do next? Or put this way, what did you do next with this in your own business? We're this person right now. What do you do with this information? So we want to go deeper into these things, right? And this is where chat GPT, and this is why Rob and I are always advocating this iterative approach and for you to think into the AI. So as you're having these thoughts, like, well, let's take burnout and overwhelm as a, as a leader, how does burnout and overwhelm affect their day-to-day, -day, their day-to-day -day responsibilities, their day-to-day -day, uh, running of their company? How does it show up? So, uh, you know, you kind of allow curiosity and questioning and active thinking just to go into the chat. So literally, as these thoughts are coming up, we would just be typing them into the, the chat field here so that you can begin to go down the rabbit hole of each one of these things. All right. So 
Here's a very important thing that I love, and this is a nuance of gold for everybody. What is going through their head in their language? Why is this good? Because so often on the marketing side of things, we can understand the high level, but very rarely are we saying this from the words of our clients. So as a tip for any of you doing coaching or group work or something where you're in conversation together, I'm going to encourage you to have very active listening and write down the exact things that they're saying about, uh, in this case, burnout and overwhelm. And ChatGPT may or may not give us exactly what this is. Okay, here we go. So <clears throat> daily effects and manifestations. So we've taken burnout and overwhelm high level. What does this actually look like in their life? So this can be called second or third level thinking. We've done the surface burnout and overwhelm. Now, how is that showing up in what specifically? Because in the way that we create or talk or do these transformations, Decision fatigue, side note, I talked about this this morning with my wife. So very relevant there around decision fatigue. Irritability with team and family, loss of focus and productivity. So you can choose any one of these things to one, create as a piece of content. Two, if you wanted to turn this into a course or a masterclass or an email sequence, boom, boom, boom. Here's the things that might be going through your client's mind. And you're like, wow. This makes sense, this makes sense, this makes sense. Do you have a solution for this? But here's the good, good. Internal dialogue. What's going through their head? I just can't keep up with this pace. Hmm, sounds kind of familiar for high performers whose get-to-do list only keeps on growing. No matter how hard I work, it's never enough. Listening here, scarcity. I'm not giving my best to anyone. Yep, know this, I've lost my edge. What am I even going to do for this? You could drill down on every one of these and be like, give me five that are just on this symptom, five on this. And then here's a little recap. So you can always learn from everything that ChatGPT shares. Leaders facing burnout feel trapped in a cycle that seems to have no clear exit. All right. Be more about the trapped in a cycle that seems to have no clear exit. Cool, so let's build out this world. So now, if this is what they're feeling, and Colin said that, think, feel, buy, and we're, we're looking at, hey, here's what they're thinking going through their head. They're feeling trapped in a cycle. And what is that? Cycle of never enough. We just created this fictional person, right, with our purpose statement. By a show of hands, how many of you can either identify or clearly see what this person's life looks like and what they're going through right now? I know that I can't because I can certainly kind of unfortunately relate to some of these things in terms of the challenge that I've had in my own business here. And look at this. So we've done cycle of never enough, the undercurrent of there's no way out. So now what we like to call this is peeling the onion. You start with the root, burnout and overwhelm, and you peel the onion. Well, how's that showing up? What's that sound like? Cool. What's this feeling like? Colin, what do you want to yes and to this? So let's let's yes and it. We've looked at think. We've looked at feel. So now let's take this and explore how this person might show up in making purchase decisions to overcome this problem. And let's see how ChatGPT unfolds this even so further. Give, give me your language there, Colin. So I want to explore how this person will go through the buying decision process. For what? To solve, to solve this specific problem. Let's try that. Super simple. So one of the level ups we hope to share with each of you is context is king. The more you give, the better. But the context can also come from the iterations of the prompts. So, all right, we got a lot of substance here. We got a lot of substance here. So something to build off of. And as you start iterating, sometimes this doesn't have to be hard. It just gets to be specific. So Colin, when you say that to reverse engineer this, what I hear is buying decision process. So if I'm each of you in my 
document that I would create of language that I use to get the most out of chat GPT, it would be one buying decision process. Another one would be identify the top 10 pain points of my ideal demographic. Another one would be what is going through their head in their language. Those three things right there are sort of the doors of possibility that can open just by knowing what to ask to explore this. And side note, if any of you have any questions or thoughts while we're going through this, either drop it in the chat or use your thumb up and we'll make sure to address it here. So Colin, here's what we're looking at on this answer. Um, when someone's caught in this cycle, they start considering their solutions. Let's walk through the stages they go through. Okay, what I hear is this isn't as specific as just they do one thing. There might be awareness, consideration, the various elements of how someone would go through. So step one, awareness, the recognition of the problem. Here's another thing, and I'm glad we did this. Here's their thoughts at this stage. Remember, so we can take the frameworks that we're building here and apply them to each of the levels. Hey, what are they thinking? What does this sound like for them? Hey, something's got to give. I kept doing this without breaking down. Imagine that as a piece of content. Right away, I'm hooked because you're speaking to my soul. You're speaking to the thing that I'm identifying with, that I'm saying to myself inside of my mind. This is the power of this process because you get to really, really resonate at a deep level with the people that you serve. It's amazing, man. Colin, you literally took the words out of my mouth. I'm like, here, if I'm writing this for LinkedIn, it is literally this, copy, paste, something's got to give, I can't keep doing this without breaking down. One year ago, when blah, 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 I found myself in this situation because one of the things that da, 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 but here's what I learned and here's what I did to overcome this and you can too. So boom, nice and simple there. Uh, side note, if you wanted to do this for marketing, uh, one of the things that I would use is write me a hook or lead with a hook. Hey, what are 10 hooks for recognition of the problem? Hey, Rob, Rob, let's play with that right now. So say, copy copy the thoughts that this that the something's got to give. Copy that, just the top one, something's got to give. And I would say, um, I would say, write me a, a LinkedIn post using the ADA framework that speaks to this. Uh, ADA is actually, let's not, uh, yeah, let's use ADA. ADA is attention. So it grabs their attention, interest, stimulates interest, and then it manipulates like desire, the energy of desire, and then it has an action at the end. So this is a marketing copywriting framework. Uh, so let's see what it does with that. So that'll be fun. Little nuggets for you guys. So Colin gave me that, but be world class because I don't want generic. Be empowering. Empowering is one that I always want to add to the way that I create. The reason is for many of us as coaches and entrepreneurs, we might come across as too matter of fact or here's how to, but facts tell and stories sell. And what we want to do is bring people along on the ride for us. So we want to empower them. Hey, if you're feeling this, I'm there for you. And then we could also concise. Go ahead, yeah, we could on. also say, uh, think about like, what do we want them to do? So we could say, we want to point them to an article I wrote that covers this topic. Cool. Let's see what it does. Okay. Uh, I know this is going to be very stereotypical for LinkedIn because everyone gets all high and mighty. It's like feeling trapped in the grind. Here's what nobody tells you about high achievement and burnout, <laughs> right? It's like no one tells you except for I'm the only one who's ever thought of this somehow, but <laughs> the game is the game. Um, and here we go. If you're a business leader, you've probably felt it. The morning dread, the decision fatigue, the constant chase to keep up. Having you lessen every, what if I told you this feeling isn't inevitable? Cool. Starts with recognizing the cycle. I've written an article on this exact challenge. Don't just push through another read on discover how to break free. Boom, piece of cake. Not saying this is perfect, but if you're sitting there at zero and you want to get a one, huh? And all we did was just take that one specific line and did that. So, um,
Another one for you guys to put in your tool bag, um, bullet points. Why? I just like it to be organized neatly. Just tell it what you want. And also only rewrite this part because chat GPT sometimes will write you five of the same thing over again. And it's way too verbose in the way. All right, so we look at this. Are you a high achiever who feels like they're running on fumes? Cool. You're like, that actually resonates. Boom, we're, we're touching that little hot pad there. So this is a very simple thing right here. And this can just be a LinkedIn post that we can ship right now. And that's how you turn that pain point into the language. Uh, anybody have any thoughts or questions about this before we just started to keep on cooking? And feel free to uh, give the thumbs up and we can call on you if you've got a question. So Eva, would you recommend leveraging Canva for this? Um, in what capacity is your mind saying Canva? Because when I think Canva, I think graphic design. Sorry, the cheap chat GPT Canva. Oh, you Canvas. Know, Canvas. Canvas. Sorry, yes. For the content creation, yes. So you would, if you wanted to work on a piece, let's say you were writing an article, then you would convert that part into a canvas and then you would edit in the canvas directly. You could also work on an ICP doc in a canvas as well. I, because Gemini is, is baked into Google's ecosystem, Google's workspace, I actually have my ICP in a Google doc and then I cook on it with Gemini inside of the Google doc. That's another way to do it as well. But yeah, if it's a, if it's an art, if it's a, if it's an, Part of the iterative process that we're talking about, conversation thread is the best way to go because it remembers the stuff that we've given it before that it that it's it's come up with and that we've given it in the previous parts of the conversation. So does the canvas, but it just like it's canvas is more aimed if we're working on a specific piece because we can just edit and re-edit parts of the canvas without rewriting the entire thing, as Rob mentioned there. Rob kind of tricked the AI into not writing it all out. Over and over, it'll just regurgitate the same thing go time and time again. And then in a long thread, when you're trying to write a, an article, it gets very messy very quickly. Cool. And Sarah's got a question. How do you break free of the cookie cutter social media language? Uh, Sarah, if you want to jump off mute real quick, obviously I understand that, but add a little depth and nuance because it's probably the one of the best questions people ask. I mean, I, I'm just really struggling with it feels like the genericization of content online these days. And I do leverage ChatGPT for a lot of idea generation. And I sometimes even copy paste, but I often feel a little bit um, like a sellout doing it because it just feels, it doesn't feel like me. I have given it some, you know, I've, I've gone into the customization and said, be warm, slightly irreverent, hopeful and energetic. Like I've given it some tone indicators that I think helps a little bit, but it's still spitting out these kind of headlines that just feel really um, gross to me. <laughs> so a, a few things. Number one, in the chat, um, right? I'm going to drop a masterclass we did last month uh, around uh, writing with chat GBT in a human way. So we actually deep dive on this exact thing right here. But I want to show you a, a few simple ways that we can reverse engineer ways to make this happen. So I'm going to share my screen again. So what we're going to call this is just using past writing. So option number one, I'll just take a Facebook post. So So I'll just say here, I want you to improve the brand, voice, and language of our blog post. Here's an example of my past writings. Give me the five to 10 keywords of what I sound like. All right, cool. So you can put this in here and get it to re-mirror to you what you have. And that was just a simple, very small Facebook post. Option number two becomes, I'm going to take a blog post, which is a little bit more content rich. All right, I'm going to copy this. 
All right. Boom. So now we're adding in the context of it. So you can look here and you're like, all right, what does it notice? Candid, growth focused, actionable. All of these you could turn into what I'll call a language document. And the context of what it gives right here, super good. It's like, all right, all of this based on. All right, so I said, let's rewrite the post you created for me because the energy and language we use is paramount. And one of the things that you'll pick up in what we'll call the iterative process, um, Colin and I teach and believe something in the, in the, you'll see this in the Writing with Chat GPT in a Human Way Masterclass. We call it the Human AI Sandwich. So Sarah, here be my recommendation for you in this is the human AI sandwich means human first. So instead of saying, chat GPT, write me the blog post, you come and you give your half-baked ideas or your thoughts to begin with. So you're starting with the inputs. The number two becomes the AI. You can add or cook on as much back and forth as there. And then before you ship the work, and I think this is the nuance that most people miss, is adding in your flavor or your energy or your language. So... Oftentimes I will say, hey, chat GBT, keep my energy and language and only make minor edits when necessary. And let me show you an example in real time of what this looks like for me, because maybe this can open up something for you because uh, I just did it yesterday. All right. So here we go. Below is a post I want to share on LinkedIn. I want it to be an empowering, inspired, deep connection. Does this work? Why or why not? Is the theme and narrative flow? So I started with, here it is. And boom, it tells me these examples. And I come back. Please keep as much of my language and energy as possible because what it ended up doing is, Sarah, exactly what you said it fails at. It started writing more like AI and not writing like me. So the key is keep as much of my language and energy as possible and only add the minor tweaks that are going to make the flow and the consistency work. And by doing that now, it's almost just working as a world-class editor. So back to our blog post together back here, are you feeling the weight of keeping it all together every single day? It's more common than you think. I read that and I'm like, that's a normal person speaking, not a, I am an AI robot for LinkedIn and this is how we speak. Does that make sense? Any, any additional questions on that, Sarah? No, that's super, super helpful. That's a lot for me to play with. Thank you. Cool. Uh, was somebody else going to jump in right there? If not, uh, so Colin, where do we want to cook on this next round, the pain points and turning this into something? So let's just wrap a bow on that little process, Rob, by finishing up the process because we've walked through the entire think, feel, buy. How do we now draw a line between think, feel, buy and what we do, how we show up, how we serve people? So let's just extrapolate from this conversation the final step, which is if we've got an existing product, we need to take a value proposition canvas approach. If you don't know what that is, ask chat GPT and match our current offering to these pains, wants, needs, and desires. So if we've not got a current offering, then I would be asking chat GPT here, what would be an ideal solution for this person? Well, okay. Do you want to start with this is what I have? Because I, I assume most people are coming in with a business already. Yeah. Well, look, we're just we're just making stuff up here. Let's do what feels fun. All right. As a coach, <laughs> my current offering is one-on-one -on -one coaching, five hundred dollars a session. Now what? Now so now what we want to oh, do wait. is 
we want to have chat GPT's help to design the ideal solution to this problem. If you've got a current offer, there's an interesting thing that you can play about with this. Have ChatGPT design the ideal solution and then have it analyze your solution. So if you've got a sales page, have it analyze your solution and find the, the holes in the boat, to quote Rob's, your language, Rob, to find the holes in the boat so that we know what are we emphasizing or not emphasizing that is critically important to our ideal client. So you can take this one of two ways. You can make your current offer infinitely better and or you can create an offer specifically for sol solving these pains that we've just identified so in this we said current offering is one-on-one -on -one coaching five hundred dollars a session or a hundred thousand dollars for the year i want you to help me design the ideal solution to this problem as i'm not sure if what i'm selling is the most ideal for them i want you to be candid and unromantic with me because it'll just naturally yes and you Oh my yeah. God, you're the best. That's the best thing. No, I want the holes in my boat. Chat GPT so, is um, one of those things that will just, it loves you and it wants you to love it. So uh, no matter what you say, it will tend to agree with you. And it'll always be like, yeah, if, if you say, if you ask, here's the thing, and Rob, you do this beautifully, like with, does this work? Why or why not? Like what's not, missing? I mean, um, if you say to Chat GPT, what is, um, what do you think of this email subject line? or this course name, or this title, it'll inevitably, nine times out of 10, it'll tell you it's amazing. Whereas if you say to ChatGPT, how could this be improved? Why, why does this, does this work? Why or why not? What am I missing? Then it forces the AI to do something deeper in its processing that actually gets you better outputs from it. What have we got here, Rob? Let's take a look at this. Um, let's just call this lots of text. All right, rethinking the one-on-one. -on -one. Scalable self-paced, accountability and community, develop a sprints model, limited emergency access or high stakes moment. Oh, that's a nice yes and creative partner. Potential new offer structure. Side note, if you're a coach or an entrepreneur, you can run into loops on how many of these things you're going to create. So you've got your current service offering and you're like, well, what about this? And what about this? And what about this? And it's not as simple as this. It can be, but make sure that fundamentally uh, you're marketing this in a way you believe in all of this, where you're like, this is here to stay. So annual transformation program, that makes sense. Focus sprints, monthly accountability memberships, and then why this structure works. I want to know why this doesn't work. It's equally, look, Seeks has said, you're absolutely right. I just made that up, <laughs> right? I'm not saying I'm right. It just said this, but we'll take this for face value. Lack of unique scarcity or distinctive value. Okay, what we're identifying here is the holes in our boat. And candidly, Colin and I probably spend more time on this part of this than anything where we have what we're doing and we're like, how's this different? How's this scarce? And you're like, that's just like everybody else, just like everybody else. So um, I like this one. And if you haven't picked up on it, you can just highlight this. And when you see these little things, it'll just build out that world when you click it. A little nuance tip for you guys. So, um, and this is kind of an important thing. What we want to be scarce. There's the book, Blue Ocean Strategy. Instead of selling what everybody else is selling, how the whole blue man group type thing where there's the circus and then there's the blue man group. They do not compete versus each other from an entertainment standpoint because they're uniquely. So develop a pr proprietary framework, the peak potential protocol. Wow, we're now building out programs. Very simple to do because it can do this for us. Phase one, two, three, four, elite level access and benefits, inner circle of elite peers, neuroscience and cutting edge, okay. This to me is the first word that feels unique. Everything else feels generic to me. 
Signature Reflection Peak Mindset and Rituals Toolkit, why this stands out. So Colin, what do you do with this now? Where do you want to take this? So we've just done this, Rob and I, on the fly with zero prep, zero pre-thought, right? We're just playing with an idea of who we might be, who we might serve and how we might serve them. Where we go from here, just like Neo says at the end of the matrix, is up to you. The idea now is that you've got this power to iterate and play with these things to either create content, to create courses, programs, offers, you name it, you can create it and go in that that direction based on this. If we'd have started with a different power positioning statement, I am a something else, like a life coach helping um, single moms to be more present with their with their kids. This thing would have been completely different. It would have been the same process, but the journey would have been different. So you can iterate on this with your unique scenario. And then what I would encourage you to do with this is to copy and paste all of this into a document that you've got so that you can begin to extrapolate along those pathways. So if this was in a text file, then each time we start a conversation, we begin by clicking the little pay-per-click icon clip icon at the bottom there and uploading the text file. And then from that saying, here's my ideal client profile, help me to dot, dot, dot. What is it we want to do today? And that's the real power of this. We've just done this in a very, a very loose, iterative way, simple way. There are, there are definite ways that we do this inside of unlimited and inside of the prompt vault that we have there, where we look at web analysis, empathy map, chain of beliefs, the things that, create that yes in the person to want to work with you and then ultimately that document then is yours to do with whatever you need so colin one of the questions that you and i asked ourselves when we created unlimited coach was this if we had to sell three clients in the next 48 hours and we were starting at zero how would we do it and our answer was ai and self-development sort of the the holistic side of it so in this here I want to make this simple and easy to execute. Because God knows we all like to overcomplicate this, both for me as well as my end client. Because remember, one of the biggest things in business, how easy is it for me to buy from you? Well, I don't have all these various things. You roll into McDonald's, it's like, I want fries. All right, pretty easy to buy there versus, well, I need a call and I need my stride, blah, blah, blah. Let's think about this, make this nice and easy. So, Here's a 48 hour roadmap to sell three high value coaching packages. Love it. Find and position the offer in three sentences. That's actually pretty good. Colin, I can see the words coming out of your mouth. Yeah, I'm, li I'm liking where you're taking it. It's good. It's good. All right. Identify the core transformation, make it scarce and unique, communicate urgency. So it even says this over the next 48 hours, I'm opening a limited high impact coaching program for executives ready to break free from burnout and reclaim control of both their work and life. I am pretty sure I know burnout coaches that would literally say exactly that. That is their marketing. This is an elite level. Now you're speaking to who it is. Results driven, important. Coaching experience where you gain exclusive strategies and tools to operate at your peak without sacrificing your health or happiness. I want that. <laughs> Am I about to just turn <laughs> unlimited into the, whatever they just said right there? <laughs> Identify your ideal 10 contacts and reach out directly. We can all do this. Leverage fearless feedback as your core hook. Use your unique language and tone to position this offer to honest world-class guidance. All right. Create a simple, high visual one pager. That's simple. We can use Canva or Framer or WordPress, whatever. Use LinkedIn to create urgency and reach your broader network. All right. Hold a short results driven call. Maybe something like this free webinar that people can join to say, hey, here's this thing that you can get. Close with confidence. Side note, we talk about this in Unlimited. Imagine doing all of this correctly and we're having this conversation together. And I had a client earlier this month say this. So, Rob, what does working with you look like? And are you selling or can you answer that in like three sentences? Because one of the things we can do everything right. 
And then they're like, I'm ready to pay you. And it's like, well, let me make sure that I've set all of the value of everything so that you get it as opposed to, listen, working with us is simple. In Unlimited, you're going to be with us for 52 weeks. The price is this. Here's the link to the landing page. Do you have any questions? So now we're looking for the little inches and holes in our game. And boom, summary. Does any of this seem like something we could not do in the next 48 hours? If you said, I'm wiping off my calendar, and by the end of the day, Friday, I'm doing this, and by Monday, I'm going to have three clients. Where's the hole in your boat? And if you're feeling resistance, I encourage you to raise your hand and let's talk about it. Hey, Rob. Yeah. Why don't we ask chat here now to say, today is Wednesday. Write me a plan to, to execute on this by the end of Saturday. Or a, a day by day or something like that. What do you think? Like time block? Uh, uh, spending, I want to spend four hours a day? Or two hours a day? Let's make it light. All right, here's your 48-hour plan. One of the biggest challenges we run into as entrepreneurs is we have this big world and vision of the things that we know we're really good at and how do we shrink them to just do this, just do this, just do this. Because what we know about high performance is it stacks like Lego blocks or bricks on a house. You do this one and you do this one and you do this one. I worked with Colin for two years and building my, web, my coaching website, my offer, my lead magnets, my automation, my everything. And how did I chop down that tree, Colin? One call at a time, taking action on everything that you told me until you're like, now do this, Rob. Anything you want to add to that? I think it's the same is true of, of all of this, isn't it? You have such power at your fingertips with this. And um, the devil is in the detail and also in how you then take this and implement in whatever it is that you're doing, wherever your context is, because this is great. If you do nothing with it, what's the point, right? So like, how do we, how do we take this and then go make a difference with what we do with how we show up and how we serve others? That's the real critical part of this. And the AI, guess what? The AI can help with that as well. You know, step by step. Cool. And Sarah, can you share? I love what you posted in the comment there. What you shared is both super simple and I believe very uncommon from a, how did, how did you actually block off two hours in your schedule? Knowing that the majority of people cannot comprehend that that's a thing you can do. Well, I'm, I'm self-employed, so <laughs> it's easy for me to block off two hours in my schedule, but it's not always easy for me to know what to do next. So I just, I just offer that as a prompt. Sometimes I tell, let chat GPT tell me what to do and I follow instructions and I find it kind of comforting just to have somebody else, um, to have my robot assistant tell me what to do next. I mean, I don't always do all the things, but it gives me some focus. Yeah, one is always greater than zero. Cool, so what's coming up for you guys right now in what we're sharing that we're an open book to help you any way. We took it from zero to the pain points, to the language, to the buying, to the scheduling, to the shipping, the work. Where is the hole in the boat for you right now? What is not making sense? How is it not like, oh, this clicks and I've got this? Or is there a light bulb that has gone off in your head that you would love to share that might be able to help somebody else out? Well, it's good to know that Colin and I were so good that we left you guys speechless because <laughs> you guys got the entire transformation yourselves. Um, Colin, what do you think would serve everybody right now the most? Okay, so um, just a couple of a couple of additional things that you could play with inside of what we've shared today. First one is, and I do this all the time. This is part of my iterative process with the client's permission. I'll caveat. So I use a software called fathom.video. 
to record Zoom calls and Fathom will create a transcript of that call. So after a discovery call session with an ideal client, somebody that I would love to work with, then what I do is I upload that transcript into ChatGPT and I go through a similar process to what we've just done here. So using now the client's language, not what ChatGPT thinks is the client's language, using the actual client's language. What are their problems? What are their pains? What are they thinking? What are the emotional drivers behind what caused them to reach out to me? How does my solution match that? How does my, my coaching solve this problem for them? And how would be the most empathetic way for me to follow up with that client after the discovery call? Um, just examples of how you can play with that. That would then be a, a new iteration and I would update the document, my sales page, all of that good stuff that happens after we've iterated. And another thing that you can do is you can use Notebook LM, a new Google product. You can upload 10, 20, 50 of such transcripts of conversations that you've had with clients and have it do it on mass. I used to do this for a living when I was a marketing consultant and we would literally interview, uh, we'd email thousands of people, we'd do surveys, we'd do interviews and we would longhand go through transcripts trying to find those key phrases, those commonalities in the results. Now we can do that instantly with the AI technology. We can create semantic maps of the key emotional drivers, the things that cause them to, to lie awake in bed at night. And you can begin then to map what it is that you do and the way that you talk about what you do, most importantly, to those things. So a few little, a little version two tactics for you to play with there. Wait, Colin, do you guys actually do this or are you just saying this? All right. Oh, yes, and you, Colin. One of the biggest superpowers in all of this. We're going to take pain points in all of this, and we're going to make this holistic. So I spent an entire day creating with my friend, Akeem, who's a part of Unlimited, who's also a coach. And I take notes. That's how I consume and create as a coach of our entire 12-hour experience together. And I took it from written, and then I put them into Evernote. And then I put them from Evernote and I copy and pasted them into here. I spent an entire day creating with another coach friend. Can you do the following? Give a high level overview of what we created, sentiment analysis. What stands out? Are there themes? What's the gold? So the same thing Colin said of the transcript of a coaching client or conversation, podcast, a webinar, anything that you speak, drop it into here. So... And you can see, this is a monster here. Here's a high level overview. The day was rich with ideas, insights, and reflection. Sentiment analysis. Throw this one in your tool belt if you're not doing this already. What is this? Boom. What are the themes of what you guys talked about? Because this can be very big because this, go, this can go in your custom instructions. Side note, what do I have here? 10 high level categories for my coaching. Boom. That's the same thing as sentiment analysis. Here's what we talk about. So we drilled down on this. And then I said, hey, what stands out? Energy catalyst, the power of why. Key takeaways, the gold. Authenticity creates connection. Huh, you think I could turn this into a post, a webinar, a podcast, a coaching program, a one-page PDF, you name it. Any one of these. And then... Can you categorize all the quotes and notes that are in there in bullet points? And Sarah, this is going to go to what you said. Use the exact language. That way I can see what we said and what resonated. I don't just want chat GPT to be like, this is what you guys sound like. I wanted exactly this. So now when we talked about authenticity and visibility, here's all the language. So now Rob, the creator goes, man, I know exactly what can go on my sales page, my hook my podcast, being seen part, that's difficult, or I've been blocking myself. So one of the great blessings of being a coach is your clients are paying you to then get better based on what they are challenged with. Because you're like, oh, you're challenged by this. I can solve that. But hearing it in the way that you're saying it, I'm going to put this into this bucket and I'm going to create a world around it. As Colin likes to say, this is like building out your ecosystem here. So you can have a, hey, are you getting stuck in your own story? Piece of content, 
ecosystem webinar element in your course. Boom. So you go through all of this. And this was just a launching pad for me to create that I can do anything that I want with. So I want to share this because this is the yes and to the pain. But what if you're your ideal client? Colin, what's coming on your mind? So once you've got once you've got that information, imagine having that in a text file. P side note, plain text is better for chat GPT if you're uploading contextual stuff than PDFs and things like that. So having that in a plain text file, now we're working on product X, content plan Y, or this campaign or this, this launch that we've got going. We begin that process by uploading that document into the chat to give it the context of the benefit of all of that iteration that we've been through, the client conversations that we've dissected, all of that good work that we've done. And then from there, we begin to uh, extrapolate to create those plans, those contents, those courses, whatever it is. And I'm, I'm deliberately not being prescriptive here because each one of us has different priorities and goals and things that we're working on and toward. But you can quite literally just fill in the blanks. I am working on. Help me to make this speak to the heart and soul of this ideal client persona. It really is that easy. It's, am it's amazing. I've delivered keynotes on this very topic to thousands of people all around the world. And the, uh, the unequivocal feedback is, wow. I did one for a group of sales execs in the US. And uh, this guy went, Colin, I've been in this game for 40 years and that is frighteningly accurate. I can't tell you, right? So this is just, fun. it's a phenomenal thing that you've got. My question to you is what will you do with this? Jason, I can feel your thinking. Well, what's going on in your mind right now? No, I just reframed uh, the early work we did on the uh, on the power positioning statement, and I'm pretty happy with it. And so I just threw it back into the custom instruction set that we had developed um, around ensuring, or sorry, it wasn't. It was a custom GPT we had developed um, around my own voice when I when I use it to write or edit or basically any sort of communication that I want to clean up and make sure sounds like me as opposed to my half-assed chicken scrabble that I'm taking notes on. <laughs> Love that. So one of the things that we like to do when we when we end our calls in Unlimited is share what we've created. So um, Irina, what'd you create today? Oh, I, I created a lot, but also one thing that I really keep thinking after after I create all that content, it's so important to capture it. It's so because I actually we just talked. Yeah, ChatGPT brought this search inside the ChatGPT. That just only shows me that I constantly go back and search for something. I was like, oh, I remember that conversation which actually brings the problem that I don't document well. So, because um, I'm looking and like trying to set up uh, like a really proper documentation. I think that's important that will let you do more like deeper research. Don't come back to beginning. Yeah, that's exactly why I recommend having an external text file so that you've right. got that as a starting point. And you could even do what Jason suggested there and create a custom GPT. We've done a masterclass on that. It's in our, on our YouTube channel if you want to check it out. But that's mm -hmm. basically creating a custom version of chat GPT trained on all of that good stuff that we've gotten out of it. Oh, does anybody else want to share any light bulb moments or what they created today? This is Kamal here. Um, I actually have a client right now who's heavy on smoking. So I, I just generated something known as uh, semantic maps, you know, using that, let me turn on my cam here. Um, and then that, that gave really good, uh, you know, uh, display of uh, first level, second level and so forth, which is really good. Thank you for that. Beautiful. Thanks for awesome. the feedback. Who else? For me, I, I, it's Joanna. I know for me, I tend to get overwhelmed. Like I'll come to one of these and I'll be like, I can't. or 
Florida. Yay. And I sort of go, okay, I'm running my business. I'm closing clients. I'm billing. I'm doing this, that, and the other thing. And now I've got one more thing to add. And the, the win and what I've created is this can replace an ad time, like sitting down and doing one thing at a time adds time because it helps me be more focused, helps me be more productive and helps me move things forward faster. So where I normally feel pretty overwhelmed, even though I want to learn something new, this, this feels very empowering to take some action. Love that, Joanna. And I'm going to share two things with you. Number one, it's a standard. Implement at the speed of instruction. If you follow this for the rest of your life, you're going to win. What this means is we do not have to tell you something twice. You hear it, you learn it, you implement it. So you can take a page from what Sarah was doing and being like, cool, I'm now going to take a two hour block that I have. It doesn't mean you're doing it the next second. You could, but not coming back a week or a month from now being like, Rob, I don't remember the whole pain point side of things with this. And the next thing will be pace, your pace in which you implement things. It doesn't mean we're living by hustle culture. It means you're in a hurry for the next level because you actually see the opportunity to create these next steps for yourself. And wow, I could actually save more time, create more impact. This could be easier. Sure, thankful that I'm flipping this around relatively quickly. Cool. Anybody else want to share before we wrap this thing up? Thank you very much for that comment uh, in the chat right there. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to drop a link there. One of the things that both Colin and I offer is... Um, if the world of chat, GBT, and AI is something that you want to explore, whether it's with us with Unlimited or coaching with us, um, feel free just to jump on a conversation with us. We just dropped our calendar link down there. And call it anything that you want to end this thing with. Yeah, Rob and I like have a vision of serving literally millions of people with this human AI, human first approach to AI. And, um, you know, we, we walk the talk, so we'll freely and happily have a conversation with you just to fast track that process for you, uh, in, in that vein, in service of, in service of you in increasing our reach by helping you to increase yours. Um, I've dropped the link to our unlimited community in the chat, so you can go and check that out. We do this and we go further, we go faster, we go deeper twice a week live inside of the unlimited program. It's epic. And people are getting amazing results and experiences from being part of that. So we'd welcome you to, yeah, hop on a call with Rob or I, and uh, let's see where we go. Fun cool. times ahead. Uh, well, sending tons of good vibes everybody everybody's way. Have a blessed rest of your day, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, guys.